welcome back to my channel. My name is Cassie and today I am going to focus on showing you guys how to get started with sublimation tumblers. So I am still relatively new myself, but when I was doing research, it would have been helpful for me to have a video or something that laid out everything that I needed to really get started. So this is exactly what I'm gonna be showing you today. If you don't know what sublimation tumblers are or sublimation is, it's basically the process of infusing ink from paper onto another object. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you what you need for tumblers. So people use sublimation for shirts, earrings, coasters, so many different things, and you can definitely do that. But this is specifically what you need for tumblers, the cheapest way that I know how to do it. So the first things first, you do need sublimation cups. Now these run anywhere between five to eight dollars a cup, depending on where you get them from. I get mine from a couple of different places. I'm gonna link it below. My favorite place is, I think it's called Maker Flow or Marker Flow. Still, again, I'm new, but I will post the link below for you guys. I buy them in bulk, bulk of a case of 25, and it makes it a little cheaper per cup. But of course, when you're getting started, you may wanna just purchase one and practice on it, okay? So you're gonna need your tumblers, and this is what it looks like. It has a white coating on it so that the ink can be infused into or onto the tumbler. You do not want to use a stainless steel cup. It will not work. The second thing that you're gonna need is sublimation paper. Now I've heard people say, you don't have to have sublimation paper. I don't know how true that is. And I don't wanna risk wasting or messing up a tumbler because they're so expensive on regular paper. So I use sublimation paper and this paper is specifically designed for sublimation. <clears throat> um, this one is a sub and you get a hundred or 110 sheets. It's eight, eight, eight and a half by 11, um, which is a perfect size to wrap around a 20 ounce tumbler. I have not tried 30 ounces, but I should I, I would think that this would be enough to wrap around a 30 ounce as well. Um, it is fast drying and it works on um, Epson, which is the printer that I have, which is cheaper than a sublimation printer. And I'm gonna show you guys what I did to transform my Epson printer into a sublimation printer and it's super, super easy and more affordable. So you get about 110 sheets for like 13 bucks on Amazon and it's linked below. Um, the next thing that you want is heat tape, okay? Because you don't want the, to use any other tape on here that isn't heat resistant because it could burn your cup or your print. So this is heat tape. I actually have three rolls on here. I love this handy dandy tape dispenser devicey majiggy thingy. <laughs> I don't know what you would call it. I'm gonna link that too, because I find this super, super helpful. And the reason why is because I can turn this wheel and it's gonna pre-cut two pieces of tape at a time, multiple actually. So it makes it super easy for me to work with one hand because I have, um, I have this hand occupied and this one. And then you also have this other side where if you want to pull the tape longer pieces, you, you can do that. So I love this little handy dandy device. E majiggy thingy. So it's awesome. Okay, the next thing you're gonna want is a convection toaster oven, which I have back here, and of course your printer with sublimation ink. So we're gonna walk over there and I'm gonna show you what I have. Um, but before I do that, when you're working with sublimation, what you're gonna want to do is use your the process basically is create your image, you can get your image or create your own, and you're gonna print it off on the sublimation paper with your sublimation printer using your sublimation ink. Keyword guys, sublimation. 
done. Then you're gonna wrap your cup nice and tight because you want this to be super, super tight, the paper to be super, super tight on your sublimation cup so that the heat can infuse the ink onto your cup. I hope that makes sense. I do have another video on here that walks through how to do that whole process. Um, so you guys are more than welcome to watch that and I'm gonna link it somewhere over here. Okay, so we're gonna walk over there. I'm gonna show you the printer and the convection oven. You wanna make sure it's a convection toaster oven, not just a toaster oven, super important. And I'm gonna show you how I transformed my Epson printer into a sublimation printer. And my Epson printer was only like $200. I've heard that sublimation printers can be up in the range of six to $800 and ain't nobody got time for that. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so this is my convection. I hope I say that right. Toaster oven. It's a black and decker. decker. It's a black and decker. And um, nothing super special about this. It's just like a regular convectional toaster oven. I did get the extra wide one so I could fit more cups inside as I, I sublimate them. I, I did, and I do recommend this. It's not necessary, but it's very helpful to get a oven thermometer, not just any thermometer, an oven thermometer, and pop that bad boy inside so you can always see the temperature that your oven is when you're sublimating uh, because you may need to adjust this thing accordingly because just because it says 350 does not mean it really gets 350 on the inside okay and let me move some of these cups over here is my printer that i use for sublimation it is an epson ET2800. They do make different types of Epsons, of course, um, so you can choose whichever one that you want that you feel would work best for you. Um, it just needs to have an echo tank so that you can put ink inside. So this does come with its own ink and it looks like this. But what I do, and what you're gonna wanna do to transform this into a sublimation printer is do not use the ink that it comes with. Don't even put it inside, don't do it. Um, what I did was purchase sublimation ink and I'm gonna link a couple below. There's the one that I got off of Amazon and then there's also a really great one that everyone's been talking about from Cosmo. I don't have that yet, but it's next on my list. So when you get this, you're gonna want to fill up your ink tanks with the sublimation ink. When I got this, I was like, okay, how do I do it? Because when you pop these open, they have these little tips on it and you just flip, you take the lid off of this and you flip this upside down and the ink flows inside. Well, the ink that I got off of Amazon didn't have the right top on it. Like this one does. It does not have this top. So what I did, and it was a little time consuming, but well worth it. I was trying to figure out the best way to do this is I took the ink that was inside of here and I emptied it out and I rinsed out the the, the plastic container so that it was nice and clean. Just rinsed it out with water. Don't put any kind of soap in there. And then I transferred my black sublimation ink into this bottle. And I did the same thing with these other colors. So these are the colors that you're gonna get with your, your printer. And when you order sublimation inks, this is what it looks like. So I just transferred my black sublimation ink into this container. And then after I did that, I actually threw the Epson ink away because I knew I would never use it and it would just take up space, but you can do whatever you want to with it. Then you can pop this lid off and you'll just flip this upside down into here. And I did two at a time. So I did the black and I did the pink. I did two at a time. It only takes a couple of minutes and you'll see your tank down here start to fill up. When it's full, it's just going to stop itself, and then you can take those off. And then I did the other one, the yellow and the blue, and there you go. 
you know, close these back up and you are ready to print. Another thing is that you want to adjust your printer settings for your printer to make sure it's a high quality when it prints. I did not do that and my first cup turned out horribly wrong. So, but when you do use your inks, you're gonna have some ink left over and I just set those to the side for later. Okay, I'm gonna show you what to set your Epson printer on and how to change the settings. I struggled with this when I first got it. I had no idea how to do that. I am using a Mac, so it may be different if you have um, a different computer, but I go into Word, any kind of document where you can print, and I am going to select print, and it's gonna think about it and then pop up. So when I first did this, it was set to default settings like this and it was just not working for me. So what I did was I come into this print box, drop this down and I go to print settings. This is where I changed the media type because it was set to something else to premium presentation paper matte. And then the print quality, I changed to high quality. I also check this box to mirror image so that every time I print with the, the setting, because I'm gonna save this setting to this, um, it's gonna print mirrored image, which is what you have to do for sublimation. Okay, then after I did that, I come here and went to color options. The color options, I did a manual setting, Epson Vivid. I cannot change the gamma, which drives me crazy. And I adjusted my brightness to nine, seven, or the contrast is seven, the saturation is 15. You may need to adjust any of these accordingly um, based off of how your prints are printing. I might actually adjust this a little bit like that, actually, just because I've noticed it's not quite as dark as I want it to be. Um, and then what you can do after you make those settings, you can click this here and you can do save current settings as a preset and then you can name your preset which i've named mine new sublimation mirror so because i was testing these different ones um so i know what it is and every time i print now i just make sure i have that preset setting on and i print a couple of other things that you may want to get is heat gloves um these come in extremely handy. Some people will use just an oven mitt or um, anything like that, which is, is, is fine. Um, but I just invested $6 or so for my heat gloves. <laughs> and then I also use painter's tape. Um, this is again, optional. It's up to you how you want to wrap your cup. Some people use this, some people don't. Some people use shrink wrap. I tried the shrink wrap method. Does not work for me, but it may work for you. But that is everything that I can think of <laughs> that you need to get started with sublimation. Um, it's extremely fun. If you're new to this, I say go for it. I started it not long ago and I love it. It's so fun. Um, you can make literally anything. You can sublimate pictures and images and anything in the world you can create. It's at your fingertips and I am completely addicted to it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any other tips, feel free to leave them below. If you have any questions, let me know and happy sublimating.